I must say that throughout this whole residency and this process, grieving has been a state and feeling that has been with me. Grieving the death of my grandmother, grieving the sickness of relatives, grieving the pandemic, grieving myself, and most recently grieving the death of my father by COVID-19. Also, the act of installing the exhibition here in the cutting, I did it as an act of grieving. How to put myself up again after this devastation of this death. That is also very political and also I think these three experiences at least that have been dealing during this pandemic, having a lot of affection people at Brazil, living here in Germany, coming from Indonesia, start to see also these dynamics. And I've been experiencing that grieving is also going through a symbolical death. But then I think it's the relationship between our individual self and the collective. We need to have symbolical deaths through our life in order to keep existing. I think it's interesting that you bring this, um, let's say, political note to your work uh, in the same sentence that you talk about individual and collective. And um, I see your work and you also talk about it uh, often as going in the opposite direction of this duality of going good or bad or going uh, life and death or um, whatever this duality can mean. Um, so maybe you can talk a little bit about this in your research and also how this relates to your exhibition here at Bethanian. Regarding this duality, I constantly feel that people, society, politics are pushing towards this extremes of duality. And then, even though my work and my research is not about gender, but my experience of identity, me being as a transgender, non-binary person, I also like to expand my personal experience and taking this beyond gender. Placing life and death in this duality and these extremes is not enough. Also dividing science and spirituality is also not enough. Where is this in-between that sometimes doesn't even have words, but they might have images for it, because that's how we're always and constantly experiencing the word. Here, more specifically, in Kostlehal Betani with the KFW Stiftung uh, Scholarship, I had a moment in this uh, situation of lockdown, not being able to access properly the city, but coming from an experience of living 14 months in Indonesia. It was a lot of like uh, solitude experience and also how to think about everything that's going on. I've been understanding how is actually taboo and marginalized talk about death on a daily basis and it's something that's happening but my concern right at this moment is why has society marginalized this topic that we don't talk with naturality we only reserve the talk about it in the situation of death which it makes the process of grieving harder I've been feeling this marginalization at the moment that this happened that we're going through worldwide I start to think it might take me maybe years to do again the way I do things. Instantly I start to think about other practices. Um, before that working mostly with installations and working with partnership with uh, people and other than human. Other than human I understand they are bacteria, they are virus, they are fungi, they are uh, deities, ancestors, time, everything that compose our ecosystem and try to bring also a horizontal view and equality between them. Here in the studio I have this plate with fruits and vegetables who are not properly fit to be consumed. Instead of throwing them away, I kept them here and they've been here for months now. Eight months, nine months. 
And then also staying with this stance, staying with rotten. It's not about fresh and rotten, but rotten and post-rotten and after-rotten, what happens. And then also understanding that in this process of rottenness, there are many processes there, like fungi, insects, life. Now that we're going through the changes of weather and, and temperature, every day there is like this different presence in it. Day by day, looking at them, drawing them directly. Something about the drawing as a way to find other means to relate with them not as much about a representation, not as much about a drawing of views, more about how to relate. In Betani, the production of these drawings was very much a result of the specific condition during the lockdown. What could I do and what relationships could I do within the situation. As the exhibition was set up, I also started to perceive how many other layers were there. And then this abstraction figuratism starts to expand and then these images become more open symbology, which is kind of I like to work with. Um, working together with this open symbology is then talking with people and asking them what are they perceiving with that they start to talk about the symbologies that they see there and then I get educated as well. It's a very new process because this is my first drawing exhibition. I, I was formally trained in schools that were teaching how to make comic books. I also been thinking how much comic books have been an influence in my life. Uh, when I was 29 years old, the first time I went to Indonesia, I found out that what my grandparents did, the comic books that they created, became one of the most famous comic books in Indonesia. Also, my father was always reading comic books around me. As my father died, a memory came to me, me being a very young child, and asking for my father to draw a frame of a very famous comic book in Brazil, and then me seeing him drawing beautifully, and then very attentively at this drawing. So, something about drawing, it's about my own home, a way to also process without words the world, maybe. There was a very formative experience in my life, and then I also think it's a very much impacting experience that I had that influenced a lot what I do, the house where my Indonesian family migrated and lived, it was in my childhood a very protected house by my aunts. They wouldn't let me touch the objects and relate with them very much, it was very strict. Uh, years after, when I was 19 years old, one of my aunts called me, they were about to sell that house and they called me to find objects of value. Uh, tragic things happened in that house. I returned there after two years the house was closed and nobody went there. And then I returned there after maybe five years I went there for the last time. When I get to the house, the house, all the furniture, all the, the things are there in the same place as I remember when I was a child. But time has taken over. So these objects were covered in a thick layer of dust, mold, and humidity, humidity was growing in places. Uh, roots of plants were entering the house. A whole library was eaten by termites. So in some way, this house being rotten, but also the memories and the the testimonies of time, also being consumed by time, it was very disruptive for me. And in this search for elements, I found this uh, pingent with a face on it. I asked my aunts around, like, who was this from? What does this symbolize? Neither of them knew. 19 years later, 
I am living in Indonesia and then I start to go to some temples and I start to see this image present in walls. Then I'm like, okay, who is this? Uh, in the research, I understand that this pigeon is a representation of an entity called Rangda that's very connected with Hinduism in, in Indonesia and Hinduism in Bali and is an entity very much related with death. Something about this 12 years later, I'm carrying always this pigeon in my life. I'm making works where the thematic of death, the, the thematic of passage of time is very present in my work, in my life, in my thoughts, but not knowing that I'm carrying a symbology of this entity. And then years later, it reveals to me who this is. After the show was set, I also connected in one way things from my research, from rottenness, the passage of time, the material changing, but also the memories of the family, was in a very formative way. Here in this exhibition, looking at a plate with things rotting. And then as I was drawing these drawings without sketch, it was very much a body experience, like just let the images come. Then in this process, elements of the culture also start to appear, like drawing this pingent, like drawing this sharp, shapes that are directly I'm referencing to this dagger of power in Southeast Asia and Indonesia called Kris. So in a way, I think this exhibition is, is a way to try for me to bring this universe together. So you say that you're a Brazilian Indonesian artist and um, how does this reflect to your work in regard to the ideas or the, uh, the cultural differences um, relating to death? Something about Indonesia is less attached. Something about what I experienced there in Indonesia is less carried with guilt. I've been seeing experience in people in Brazil who had been dealing very heavily with this and been living with guilt and been dying with guilt. For sure this is related with the Christian Catholic basis of the Brazilian culture. The narrative about being born, growing, uh, getting elder, dying, that's a, a construction that many times it's a lie. Uh, if a baby dies, that's already a full cycle of life. If a young person dies, that's already a full cycle of life. Um, and then not being able to talk about it on a daily basis, or talk about how would I like to live to die well? How would I like to die, talk with that with friends, talk with other families without being a hard topic? I think this can be quite revolutionary. And I also understand that now, July 2021, we're seeing strongly the differences with power and politics. Places who are very well uh, protected with vaccine, uh, protected with the law, and others who are now very hard. And I wonder, are people grieving? Shouldn't we be now in this society different? Is capitalism pushing us to forget? Is capitalism not a system that allows grieving? And it's about bothering. We first need to bother to break the taboo. Twenty twenty one. I'm. Framing in a larger context, what I'm calling the Rotten Research, which is different projects with each one a specific language of creation and art, and then each one of them working together with other people and also thinking about a site specific for each realm. Then it is being divided and also connected through lectures, uh, essays, uh, interviews, uh, my position and also as educator, 
uh, research projects, uh, installations, exhibitions, and etc. Then for each project there's also like a position. Some of them are like collective projects and the authorship is more diluted and then they're coordinating. Uh, for instance, Rotten TV, which is this uh, project between um, Indonesia, Scotland and Brazil. I understand myself as someone who's learning with the works, not someone who's producing content for other people to learn, but also as a way to learn together. And then we put it in the world and then this starts to evolve. So often with my installations, I need two years to kind of like understand the concepts around it with the pandemic and also this limitation that I spoke in the past, I felt the need to write about the topics that I've been thinking about and how it's important also that I haven't registered it. I found ways to find peace with it. I needed to reach out for friends who would teach me how to write and how to find my own language in writing. I also think it's a more mature time for me to be able to express with other languages without being insecure about them. I think there's like this micro and macro, you know, like my individual experience, the things that I need to do by myself, the things that I need to do in collectiveness, the thing that I need to work with other people. So this is the attempt. Something about this residency was kind of like a moment to concentrate and also to be able to leave this chaotic world that we're living right now and then also understanding where, and I'm still in this process, where am I standing? Um, it has been many scales of it being in crisis with my own body, having dysphoria, being in crisis with humanity, being in crisis with the politics, the territories, the conditions. I've been thinking constantly in this term, innegotiable condition, and I've been thinking how death is an innegotiable condition. We cannot negotiate with a dead body. The same thing, I cannot negotiate with my living conditions, I cannot negotiate with my hunger, I cannot negotiate with my desire to sleep. If I try to negotiate, there will be a moment that I will collapse. And then this perspective is also something that I'm now bringing more towards the work and how it's important to be also diverse in them. My focus still is installation, but I also think that the challenge and coming out of the challenges of this pandemic is also being um, confident that I can express myself together with other people in other languages of art and that's not going to diminish my other practices.